Welcome back to Dynasty Football Live, where Byron got his ass straight up whooped last week in prediction. <laughs> I'm really, really sad about it. You know, I like to think that, uh, you know, I can win everything, but, you know, man, it got me pretty good. We are looking at, for me, eight and eight on the year for week one. I, I went 500, and Manny is batting at 11 and five right now, dude. What? What a good week you had. Not so hot in Dynasty for either of us. But, you know, uh, and I think no one saw this week uh, turning out the way that it did, especially yeah. with the Aaron Rodgers news. RIP, brother. Um, but anyways, guys, today's video, we're getting in to our waiver wire ads for week two, who we think you should pick up at each position. We're going to give you just one guy that we think is worthy of a roster spot. Um, this is not – necessarily in our league, but a consensus throughout what we've seen, um, you know, going around. But um, with that being said, guys, uh, Manny, also we're going to be giving you our Thursday night prediction game in this video. So lock up, get tight, and let's roll. What you got for quarterback for your waiver wire this week, week two? Well, um you know, it wasn't a, a crazy performance by any mean by this guy, um, but no turnovers. Um, the offense kind of started slow. Uh, I'm talking about Tampa Bay, uh, Baker Mayfield. I think he had a really, really good game, uh, mistake-free football. Um, and he gets to play the Bears next week, which had a kind of a, you know, hard time against Love. Um, I'm excited about Jordan but at the Love. same time. The Bears look really, really bad. Uh, so I'm also looking forward to see him in against a little bit better competition. But yeah, for me, um, as weird as it may sound, I think Baker's going to be available in most leagues, I would imagine. Um, um, and uh, if you need a spot start or if you have injury to, you know, Rogers, and uh, I'm sure Zach Wilson's available in most leagues. But uh, I think for me, Baker Mayfield is uh, maybe a little bit better based on what he did. The matchup. Yeah, I like that. You know, Mayfield uh, is not my favorite person to even – Think about yeah, it. me, me either. <laughs> it was hard to say his name, but yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, man, it's going to be Jordan Love. I'm going to the Packers uh, here, man. And wow, did he have a hell of a week one? Um, yeah. I was so happy for you, man. I know you were jumping up and down to see the next generation of uh, the gold and green. Um, really put a stamp on it, man. Oh. Hit dubs twice for for a touchdown. Um, mm -hmm. Man, what a week one. Uh, so, yeah, for sure, going up against Atlanta, I think it'll be a nice little matchup if, uh, you know, Green Bay can stop the run and keep Love on the field. Um, I like it. Uh, I'll take Love all day against Atlanta. So, uh, for me, mm -hmm. if he's available in your league, which uh, I don't know, man. I have a hard time believing he's available in a lot of leagues, but uh, – We'll say Jordan Love this week. Uh, another guy, if you really like, you said I would. I would start looking at guys that could possibly be losing in deeper leagues. A guy that I'm keeping an eye on, and I'll let you guys know this. And this is probably a dumb idea because our waivers <laughs> are coming out in the morning. But um, keep an eye on Malik Willis. A really good training camp. Uh, Tannehill looked like straight garbage in the first he game. Did. Uh, it was not a pretty showing by him, and I think it's about to be next man up in Tennessee. So, if he's available and you got a roster spot, might want to go look at Malik Willis. Just a little insider from uh, your boy DJ. Um, <laughs> who we got at running back, Manny? Well, this one is another another name. I, I really like this guy personally. I, I like him as a player. Um, the only thing I don't like is that he plays for the Rams. And uh, and I was really hoping Zach Evans would be <laughs> the eventual guy, but yeah. it looks like Karen Williams, uh, you know, at Notre Dame, you uh, know, owned and in, in generally in most leagues, about 7% of the leagues. Um, so he should be available in most leagues. And um, he had an amazing game. I mean, I think – I don't think anyone expect that. I think um, everyone was uh, either on the hype train of Akers and, and maybe, you know, Zach Evans eventually taking over possibly – uh, at least I was, but uh, Karen Williams threw a wrench in, the, in those plans. So uh, for me, it's going to be Karen Williams. I like him, man. He looks really fresh, uh, ready to go, man. Looked like somebody just let him out of the gate, man. He was running fast, smooth, and strong all game. Yeah. Uh, 
you know, he was a really hot name, uh, you know, a couple years ago in the draft and kind of a guy that kind of just fell out of, uh, you know, you know, out of existence for a little bit. And then now, voila, here he is, you know, having a hell of a week one. So um, I'm agreeing with you on, on Kyron Williams. However, there is a guy that did hurt himself, a uh, very important running back, by the way, of the name of Austin Eckler. He just seems like he's always somehow finds his way on the injury report. We don't know when he's going to show up and be there, but uh, apparently – he is there week one already. So for me, I started looking at maybe Josh Kelly if he's available. He had a pretty strong uh, finish after you know Eckler went out. I might want I might want to get me some shares of that depending on how bad that injury is there with Eckler. Um, also another guy uh, would be Justice Hill. Man, he came out of nowhere scoring touchdowns against my Texans. I was like, man, what is going <laughs> on? Man? Uh, you know, so uh, Justice Hill, Gus Ferguson. Maybe. I, I think I think personally, guys, if I'm the Ravens, as soon as Dobbins popped his Achilles, I'm on the phone with Kareem Hunt. Hey, where you at? Get here now. We need you, Kareem. Please, please, please. Man, you're talking about a, a running back that could get things done without skipping a beat? Kareem Hunt. Mm-hmm. Another guy on the waiver wire that you could possibly pick up. If he, if he gets picked up by the Ravens, the dude is an RB1 all year long. I don't care what anybody says. So that's my running back. Yeah, that's a really good thought, man. And uh, one thing I heard uh, actually today, uh, I don't know exactly how uh, solid these rumors are, but, you know, first thing we heard, you know, the first running back we think about that's unhappy and needs a new home is Jonathan Taylor, uh, you know. Maybe Ian Rappaport kind of mentioned something about Jonathan Taylor possibly being a good fit. We'll see what happens there. But, yeah, Kareem Hunt definitely free. So yeah. why not take him? Hey, man, so let's just imagine. Let's slow down for a second and just imagine Jonathan Taylor in a backfield with, with Jackson, bro. Oh, my God. That is way unfair, dude. That's so unfair. Like, because the RPO – is going to just murder everybody. And especially they have a pretty solid offensive line. They normally have an offensive line that's, uh, mm-hmm. you know, pushing through the walls of everything in existence. So, um, Well, imagine imagine if he was with uh, Anthony Richardson. If he decides to play, it's going to be good. But, uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that eight, eight. Good pick, by the way. Hey, I told you. I told you. We, we we all knew it, but I reassured you and patted you on the back not to be ashamed of that Anthony Richardson pick. Here he goes, showing out week one. So, good pick. Yeah, people give me a hard time. But, um, all right, let's move on to wide receivers. Uh, I think this, this guy is probably going to be available in most leagues, even including Dynasty. I know in our league, uh, even though he was ranked a lot higher than some of the rookies that were picked in a later part of the draft – um, I think people are still like, I don't want to get him. <laughs> I don't think he's the third, maybe fourth option in that offense. Um, and for Zay me, Jones, I think, um, if you look at, you know, I think, uh, Lawrence has a lot of trust in him. Uh, and you can tell by that throw he made in the back of the, or the side, you know, kind of back of the end zone. It was an amazing catch and he put it right in the right spot where it was going to be Zay Jones or no one. Um, he had seven targets. In that game against the Colts. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think even myself was sleeping on Zay Jones. I was kind of fighting the urge to pick him up. Um, but it's someone to keep uh, keep an eye on for sure. Yeah, um, I got a couple more Rams going here, man. Um, first, everybody's obvious waiver wire ad is definitely that big man, Puka Nakua. Um, you know, everyone was warned, you know by you especially in our videos uh, about this guy, you know, that, you know, you know, this cat was going to come out and set the league on fire. All he needed to do was get a chance. And, um, you know, 10 receptions in your freaking debut, dude. I mean, Mm -hmm. looking at 119 yards in your rookie debut and same for Atwell. Atwell came up, dude. Um, I'm 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 ashamed to say that I dropped him. I should have I should have held him. Now he is probably going to be our top waiver wire uh, guy in our league uh, this week for week two. Um, 
projected nine points to you right now, which is really solid if if you're looking at points on a for a free guy, you know, for for uh, yeah. some fat. But guys, I'm going with the Rams duo there, Puka Nakua and two two Atwell. All right. Uh, next, I have a guy who uh, I was kind of, you know, I'm kind of glad he had the week he had. Um, I was a little down on him just based on the, you know, what he did last year, but he kind of bounced back at least week one he did. Uh, for me, a tight end is Hunter Henry. And I think questions, uh, especially after they picked up Gusecki, uh in the offseason, uh, even though the Patriots are known to use two tight ends a lot, um, you know, Hunter Henry kind of took the kind of took the lead here. Uh, week one, he's owned in, in most leagues about 17% of the time. Um, Dynasty, obviously, I'm pretty sure he's already picked up, but um, he outsnapped um, Gasecki 63 to 33, um, and he put up pretty, pretty good numbers. So I, I'm, I'm sorry to say I didn't start him. I wish I had. Uh, I was a doubter, even though I have my team and I, and I want to believe, but yeah, Hunter Henry for tight end position. Dude, he had a nasty catch. I don't know if you saw it, but it was like it was a nice, nice. Uh, I think it was a one-handed catch, dude. I was like, "Who was that?" <laughs> I, I was like, "Oh my gosh, bro!" It was Hunter Henry coming back from the app. Um, <laughs> so for me, this week at old tight end position, I got three guys. Um, one, uh, Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz had a pretty decent game. Considering everybody left him for dead, um, he's definitely available on waivers right now. I would give him a chance. You know, with 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 him being available, I don't know how much they're going to actually, like, trust the second-year guy, McBride, quite yet. I think they kind of st- want to season that stake a little bit longer. Uh, you know, um, we might see McBride rise to the top by the end of the year. However, another guy – then I'm keeping an eye on two I'll more. Give you guys three. Uh, Adam Troutman from the Broncos. Greg Dulcich went down with a pretty bad uh, injury, saying he's going to be out for quite a while. Uh, Troutman was uh, doing some things. I don't know if you guys saw, but he was getting hit a lot and often by Wilson. And um, you know, I, I would take, I would give him a look if you're tight end needy. And my last but not least is Mr. Hayden Hurst with the Panthers. Um, Every rookie needs a safety blanket, a check down guy besides a running back. And Hayden Hurst has been that throughout his career when he was with, you know, the, the you know. The Ravens? I guess, I guess Ravens kind of for Lamar back in the day. I don't really. He didn't really light it up there. He got a pass pretty quickly by Mark Andrews. And then um, it was dust after that. But then, you know brought his career back last year and now here he is being the safety blanket for none other than Bryce Young. So mm-hmm. um, give him a look, man. Cause I think Bryce is going to look his way when uh, them linebackers and them defensive ends are breathing down his neck to dump it off, man. So uh, for me, it's Hayden Hurst. All right. And next uh, or last, um, we're going to be talking about the prediction for the Thursday night football game. Um, I'm hoping it's a good one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, both teams kind of struggled a little bit out of the gate a little bit. Uh, obviously, Vikings lost and the Eagles, uh, even though they won, they didn't look exactly like the Eagles. So we'll see. Uh, we'll hopefully get some bounce back performances and have our first uh, good Thursday night football game that we've had in a long time, hopefully. Uh, but um, as much as I want to say, I kind of want to do the upset just because I, I had a little bit of luck with the upsets last week, but um, you can't go against the Eagles. I feel like they're going to get their act together and kind of figure out a little bit. Um, just kind of like uh, one of those things would, would happen with a lot of teams in week one, especially offensively, um, other than obviously <laughs> the Dolphins, Chargers, and Rams uh, that all score. And, well, I'm not going to count the Cowboys because they had more defensive touchdowns than <laughs> regular touchdowns. but. Um, but yeah, I think they're going to get the offense figured out. So for me, it's going to be the Eagles. And um, from the Vikings perspective, um, a guy that you mentioned last week, as far as your guy that's going to get the ball a lot or, or do something, he didn't put up a lot of yards, but he did have nine targets, ended up with eight catches and I think like 30 something yards. Um, that's Hawkinson. That's my guy for the Vikings uh, on that side of the ball. Um, I think with getting that many targets, you're bound to find the end zone, uh, especially him being a big body. 
so hopefully he'll get the same amount of targets and maybe more yards and maybe he'll sneak in a touchdown or two. Um, as far as the Eagles, mm, I'm going to go with Gainwell just because he kind of, he's kind of the hot name right now. Uh, for some reason, Swift is, hasn't been quite as involved early on, at least a week one, he wasn't. So, uh, for me, uh, it's going to be Gainwell on the Eagles side. Nice. Um, yeah, man, I, I know that you want me to go with, uh, the Eagles because you want me to be still behind you. <laughs> I mean, you got to catch up, dude. <laughs> and what I saw out of the Vikings was, was nice, man. They have a nice offense. I'm, 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 I'm very pleased with what I saw, especially from Addison, man. Oh my mm-hmm. gosh. And he is my breakout for the Vikings, which I'm taking in an upset. They're going to go in. They're going in to Philly, and they're going to beat them. Justin oh, Jefferson wow. is too much. Justin Jefferson is just too much. Um, too much sauce. Uh, <laughs> kind of throwing a Hail Mary on this one because I got to play catch up because, you know, I'm, I'm a couple back. But uh, I'm going to take the Vikings here in a close one. I think that uh, Jefferson's going to one-hand it in the end zone and uh, <laughs> toe tap all over Slay's uh, chest for the win. Um, but anyway, nah. That, uh, is, that is what you said about Pickens, and that didn't quite work out. So uh, <laughs> yeah. we'll see what happens. Well, well, week one didn't work out for anybody around these parts. So, uh, yeah, yeah we got, it was it was pretty, uh, pretty bad. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. Addison for me for the Vikings and on the other side of the ball, I'm going to take Devontae Smith. So I think he's going to have a nice game. I think they're going to double AJ and uh, I think it's going to come down to Smith. So for me, Vikings is my pick, just so you know. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds good. We'll Uh, see what happens there. All right, guys. Uh, Hope you liked our video. Please like and subscribe. Come back. Uh, You know, leave some comments down below. Say, hey, man, you're on drugs. No, I'm just kidding. Don't say that. But uh, <laughs> Or, you know, just, just leave a cool comment. Say, hey, guys, you guys are really awesome. You know, we appreciate you pumping these videos out. Um, like always, man, uh, we want you guys involved. We want you guys to follow us throughout the year, throughout the off season. We love bringing you guys content. So, uh, yeah, Dynasty Football Live, baby. Here we go. Dynasty Football out. <laughs>